New, 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 new. Well, that's a good one. Okay, uh, first up, new product newsletter. If you have an Adafruit account, you can go into your preferences. This is the only type of newsletter we would send. We don't automatically sign you up for it. We don't put a giant thing in front of your screen. We don't do stuff like that. Because if we did, someone would do a clip of me saying this every single week, and they would just play it over and over to me. We don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. OK. Let's kick it off. Let's do this. Starting off, we have two new products from PyCon. PyCom, PyCom, sorry. There's, there, there's PyCon, PyCom. Two new products from PyCom. We have the PyTrack and the PySense. Uh, these are add-ons for the PyCom boards uh, that run Python. They're ESP32 based for the most part. And um, they have Wi-Fi or LoRa or like some of them are gonna have uh, other wireless protocols like cellular or Bluetooth or what, whatnot. Um, but these are add-on boards that add a lot of capability. They're little kind of under shields. Um, so the first one is the Pi Track. So this works with any of the PyCom low pi or sci pi or y pi boards um, and this one gives you a gps module a uh, with antenna we have a um, usb to serial converter a battery battery charger uh, i think there's an accelerometer on here as well and then a usb sorry a um, micro sd slot and a little uh, user button and then the next one if you can go forward. So this is the one with the um, I only go GPS. Forward. This is the Pi Sense. So the Pi Sense uh, looks very similar. It also has USB battery, battery charging, uh, and it has accelerometer, but it also has um, humidity, light sensor, barometric pressure sensor, temperature sensor. So it's, it's a kind of a wide range of temperature, humidity, environmental sensing capabilities. Um, so there's, there's two of these, and uh, you can use one or the other. They, they don't cross work, but that's okay. And um, they come fully assembled and yeah, they work with any of the Pi boards and it, you know, they even have a little like cloud-based system that you can use for uh, streaming your data. So this is a really easy way to, if you have a Wi-Pi or a low Pi, um, add a whole bunch of sensors. Does it have JTAG, someone wants to know? This does not, I don't know. This It does have a, a two by five connector, but I'm not sure if it's a JTAG. It probably is. Yeah, it looks two like a- Two by five, this yeah. is usually SWD or JTAG. Let me check the PyCom site. Yeah, but I'm not 100% sure. Check the PyCom site. Um, all I can see is like, you know, a I mean, we have the description in the product page, but USB battery charging, sensors along here, and then micro SD, and then this plugs right in. All so. I see is matte black PCBs. Matte black PCBs are where it's at. Okay. I'm, okay, I'm in there. Yeah, next up. Next up, little spy camera. We have this, have had a spy camera for the Raspberry Pi. Where's it's my a spy very, camera? It's right Where's here. my spy camera? It's right here. Where's my spy camera? It's right oh, here. it's here. It's here. Um, so this is a very cute little camera. And this one, um, the makers of the spy camera have updated this to be a zero spy camera. So it plugs into and only into the CSI connector on the Pi Zero. It does not plug into the normal Raspberry Pi connector. We have a different camera for that. And then what's nice about this is how compact it is. It's like so small. Um, you know, you can fit it on the back. And you know, I have headers on this one because it's used for demos, but you can make a super, super skinny um, camera setup. And this is a five megapixel camera. So it's kind of equivalent to the original Raspberry Pi camera. It's not equivalent to the new eight megapixel, per, um, megapixel one, but it's okay if you just need a really teeny camera. Um, it's not going to be as nice and good as the official Pi camera, but it is really small. So it does fit a niche, a very small niche. Perfect for dates with Russian ambassadors and FBI directors. See, I'm just, I'm, I got to stop watching the news. <sighs> I know, look, Anyways, okay, next up. Ooh, the Axi Draw. This is from our friends at EMSL. We ordered these a while ago and they finally came in. Um, this is the V3 Axi Draw. This is a really beautiful plotter. It's a pen plotter, um, but it's an XY gantry that you sort of set down and um, it pretty much comes fully assembled. You have to do a little bit of assembly and you can attach any kind of pen, fountain pen, marker, Oops, Sharpie. Um, that's the next thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you can see here it holds at an angle and um, there's videos that we have on the product page. And of course, if you look around the Google for AxiDraw, there's tons of um, videos and pictures of what people have done. It's a very, very high precision um, dr drawing plotter. It's one of the highest precision ones I've seen. Uh, so it can do like really beautiful stipples. Yeah. It can fill <laughs> in and it like stays right between the lines. It's like perfect. You sound about 
3,500 magazines by hand. We were contemplating doing it this, but then we'd hear people say it's not real. You didn't really sign it. It's like too it. perfect, right? It's too perfect. Yeah. Uh, maybe next time we will, but this time we won't. And we have video of you signing each one because internet guy. Um, so we got that. Yeah, so check this out. This is an amazingly high quality plotter. Um, it's not going to be like a two servo thing. It has like these really hardcore stepper motors, their stepper motor driver. Um, but it's a, it's a beautiful machine, really well designed. Um, we actually have one. We're, we're probably going to finally put it together. Right over there. Yeah, we'll put it together and we'll do some really cool projects with it. Okay, next up. We got a little sneak peek before. Yeah. Um, we got a 3D printer. Yeah, this is a Sigma uh, th uh, BCN 3D printer. We've actually had this for a bit and finally got around to putting it in the store. What's really nice about this printer is it has dual extrusion uh, capability, see, double extruder. And so. Twice the extrusion. Twice the extrusion. <laughs> so you can do double color, but you can also extrude, you know, in a filament. Look at this. That can be dissolved. It's also really high quality. Um, it's a really lovely printer. No, and Pedro tried it out, and they were like, "This has got good build volume. The dual extrusion is really nice. It's got a really nice interface board. Um, one of the nicer 3D printers that we've seen in a bit. Yeah. And we stock it now. This is one of the best photos I believe that a 3D printing company has taken, because who has a magnifying glass anymore? But everyone knows what it is. It's on every computer, and so they used it as an excellent way to illustrate the and quality. And you can show the, the gigantic Be, build volume and the precision. Because it, here's the problem: if if it's 3D print is really good, and you take a nice photo of it, it's like, well, that just looks like a certain, you know, a perfect sculpture. And if you if you get in too close, it's like, well, that's just like Ridges, a, a yeah. flat thing. So that's an excellent way to illustrate this. I just want to whoever you are, photographer who did this. Nice work. Nice work. We should get a magnifying glass. I I have one. Next up. <laughs> I have one. Okay. We have... Uh, That's a button. We, we uh, didn't get this in last week. It didn't make it in, so we're adding it now. This is another one of our LED buttons. This is a 30 millimeter button with an LED in it that you can PWM and control. So you have this little video, but I also have a demo. Or I had a demo until I... Yeah, I'll just keep playing this then. I'll wait till you're ready. Oh, that's cool. My demo broke. Oh, that's working. You okay. broke the demo. Yeah, no, my Arduino just got um, unplugged. So, um, yeah, it, I've heard. It happens. Uh, so it has like a nice switch here. It's not too clicky. It's got like a good motion, like a good, you know, you, you press it, but it's not, um, oh, see, this keeps shorting. Um, you press it and you know you pressed it, but it doesn't click, which is kind of nice. And people like that sort of soft action. It's, um, you can connect to it with these terminal spades. And then there's an LED. There are actually two LEDs. You can, um, man, I keep resetting this. Uh, you can see there's like two LEDs. They're, they're diffused a little bit through it. So it's not too bad. It's not like hot. And they have uh, resistors inside. Um, oh, I see. It's these two pins that are shorting. There you go. Problem solved. Um, there's resistors inside, so you can power it from like 3 to 5 volts. It'll be dimmer at 3, brighter at 5. This is 5. Uh, you can PWM it, control it however you want, blink it, I don't know, do whatever you like. But what's nice is that it's built into the arcade button and uh, has a really nice look to it and a uh, pretty good cost too. So we have a couple different colors and this is green. Okay. We have blue and white, red, red. yellow. Next up. Dr. Octopus's uh, son that he forgot to pick up from school that time. And I know. He, he, was, he was a latchkey octopus. Latchkey octopus. Kid and and this he stayed is there and he's like, Dad, what are you going to at me? So. This is cool stuff. So this is from um, Hobby Creek. They make a lot of these um, really nice uh, arms, you know, that they, they have um, nice ends on them and they're adjustable. It's basically like a very fancy third hand. And this one, um, last couple weeks ago, we put in just the magnetic hand, just yeah. the individual Here, magnetic I'm gonna, hand. I'm going to zoom this in. Yeah, you want to zoom out? Yeah, well, I mean, you can just hold it. This is one of the ones that you'll hold up. Yeah. yeah, I have to hold this up. Okay. So you can adjust these and, like, grab things. Yeah. And then they're held onto this oh, magnetic base. I can go like this and it'll force me to smile all day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what's cool is this has got a, a nice solid base and these are magnetic so you can like reposition them however you like. So if you have to hold something at a weird angle or it's an unusual shape, you can get in there and, and grip it and grab it. And then they also come with these um, magnetic little trays that you can use to hold all your parts. And especially if you have screws and stuff, it'll keep them in place, which is nice. Or components, it'll keep them in place. And this is nice and strong, but not so strong that you can I can't. like the dishes are magnetic too. Yeah. 
And what's nice is it's got oh. a finish, so it doesn't, it won't uh, crack. The next time I go on a flight, I'm going to bring this with me because I could put all my food and all the things I want to do, and I could hold up a magazine and all sorts of stuff. This will yeah. totally be okay. This will be like... On my next United flight. Yes. And then there's like, oh, there's an ESD strap um, yeah. connection too, if you want. And it's got okay. like nice rubber pads. So this is really fancy. Uh, it's intense, but I think if you really need um, a third-hand tool and you want like the best of the best for intense projects for intense people this is pretty intense yeah. but I, you know all the stuff that they make i really love the build quality and the price is really good i feel like it's a really good value um so i'm digging it okay so check it out from hobby creek and check out their other ones if you don't need something this big the star of the show tonight besides you lady ada or evie I would totally, it. I would totally not kidnap you and trick you and shave your head and then say you're free. I, I totally would that. not do that. Okay. I hate that, man. I would, I would I not do that. Write, I would not do that. I have that. to write all my schematics on toilet paper. Yeah. However, I was yeah. created in a lab and I was burned and I'm gonna get revenge. Okay. So, anyways, uh, we got one of these. This is um, the Adafruit 128 by 64 monochrome OLED bonnet. Basically, when I realized that 1.3 inch OLED fits right inside of a, of a Raspberry Pi Zero outline and it could make for a very nice add-on um and then you and i we actually designed this together we did a, a desk of lady ada stream like a couple months ago where we designed this there was space on the side and so i was like oh i could add buttons and a joystick and and we kind of worked it out um the joystick and buttons are connected to gpio the oled ones from i squared c you can get about 15 frames a second um at full speed if you're redrawing the entire screen every time, but of course you can also just update small portions of the screen if you'd like. Yeah. Um, and I think I my nails turned out pretty good for this video. Yeah, nice work. Thank you. Do you know the nails have a little bit of, they have like a, like a pearlescent sheen. Yeah. Like, um, so I'm going to go to the overhead and I'll shut off. Yeah. Okay, so this is the bonnet, and um, it comes fully assembled. We solder on this 2x20 surface mount header, and it's, um, I have the pads throughout here. So if you do want to through hole, you know, if you want to solder it permanently to something, um, you can poke the pad. You can actually see, like, this goes, it's, uh, it goes through. So you can see, like, you can see through the holes. So you can um, push it all the way down and then solder it to make it more, you know, a solid connection if you need a permanent connection. Um, we have a five-way joystick, so this goes up, down, left, right, and then in, and then um, A and B, and then there's a little reset circuitry, and um, this is soldered on. So this is um, the bonnet all connected up, and then we would um, we have a Pi game. Like you can't have this display HDMI; it's just too small, 128 by 64. You won't see anything in monochrome. So instead, we suggest using Pi game, like Python, to uh, create your custom interface. And Python's great; you can draw anything. You can have text. You can it'll handle all the redrawing for you. It's very easy in Python. Um, so for example, uh, we have this example code, so you can uh, see when I press the button, it lights up the corresponding um, uh, circle. And then when I press up and down, left, right, it does the triangles. And then in, it presses the, it selects the in uh, square. And then if I um, press all three buttons, it shows a little GIF. There's a little bit of a refresh, but it's, it doesn't appear on the OLED. It's just part of the camera. Yeah. So just in case you're wondering, hey, is it refresh? We got like quicker? eight cameras going on. And, and cameras aren't as good as our eyes yet. They're yeah. getting close though. Yeah. So it can also draw uh, images really easily. So it's just, you can see it's, it's drawing a little cat GIF. Once cameras get as good as eyes, I'm going to get my eyes replaced with cameras that are as good as eyes, and I'm going to do that one spot color. So everything's black and white except for your pink hair. That's great. Yeah, just like those photos I take. You can use this with any kind of Raspberry Pi. It doesn't have to be a Pi Zero. Yeah. It works with a Pi 3, Pi 2, anything with a 2x20 connector because you do have to plug in that 2x20. Um, but given that, you can use it with any Raspberry Pi. and it's, it's very easy to use, and we have Python library that's very well established. We've had it for a couple of years. So you can get going and, and make a custom little interface. You can have it print text, graph something. You can control your project and have some output. So I think this is... A nice addition to our bonnets. Oh, great. Okay. And with that, Lady Ada, that was new prize. Congratulations. You did it. Woo! Yay! Zoom.